right here. Cycle. <laughs> Got it. So let's do a round of intros. Um, can uh, so can you, can you, can, Adrian, since we're recording, can you do me a favor and just say the date and the meeting just so that if somebody replays it, we are. Wonderful. So welcome everybody to the November Oak Park Neighborhood Association monthly meeting. It is currently 6.05 p.m. on November 4th. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, my name is Adrian Wren. I'm uh, president of the Oak Park Neighborhood Association. We're a nonprofit serving the neighborhood. Uh, excited to see some current and former OPNA board members on the call uh, and other folks in the neighborhood. Um, I'll pass it to my colleague, uh, Luis, next. Introduce himself. And maybe we can also share where maybe where we're coming from in the neighborhood. So I'm on 4th and 39th. Thanks, Adrian. Hi, everyone. My name is Luis Jimenez. I live off of um, 6th Avenue. Um, I've been in the neighborhood now consecutively for four years, but I grew up here when I immigrated from Mexico. Um, so I'm just excited to be here today. I'll pass it on to my colleague, uh, Michael Blair. Hey, thanks, Luis. And I'm Michael Blair. I'm in the south part of the neighborhood, 44th and uh, Roosevelt, close to there, over by the Fruit Ridge Community Collaborative, if you know that. And I've been in the neighborhood about 20 years and been on the board a whole lot of years. So uh, mm -hmm. glad to be here. Glad to see everybody uh, coming on out and uh, looking forward to a great meeting. I will pass it on to uh, our former board member, uh, Andrea Rivera. Hey, hey. Hi, everyone. Good to see uh, my former board member colleagues. But yeah, my name is Andrea Rivera. Um, I live on Fourth Avenue in Santa Cruz, so right near Fourth Avenue Park, Adrian's neighbor. So um, yeah, happy to be here and see everyone. It's been a long time. And I'll pass it on to uh, Rosie. Everyone, hi, my name is Rosie Ramos. Um, I think we're like super close, Andrea and Adrian. I didn't realize how close we were. I'm on Second Avenue in Santa Cruz, or on Santa Cruz off of Second. <laughs> um, so super close. Um, yeah, happy to be here. Well, you're gonna pass it to Rosie. That's right. I will pass it to Dave. Hi everyone, Dave Brown here. I live on Y Street, uh, the 3900 block, or 39th. You know, yeah, 3900 block, and I've been in the neighborhood 11 years. And I will pass it on to Richard. Hello, everyone. Richard Falcon here, um, here to present what we're going to be doing with La Pastorella. I am an artist, a theater artist, and an arts activist, as well as a social justice um, community organizer. So glad to be here with all of you. Let's go to Aaron Anderson next. Hey, I'm sorry, it says Riley. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm Aaron Anderson. I, uh, I live on Santa Clara between second and third. Um, I'm also the owner of Purple Pig Eats Oak Park over on Third Avenue and Stockton Boulevard. Uh, we're in the old Merlino's building. We've been in there since, uh, since May of this year. Um, so I'm happy to be here and be a part of this as well. And uh, nice to meet you all. Awesome. How about uh, Dimitri? Right. Uh, what's up, guys? Dimitri uh, from Cap City here, right on the corner of Broadway and MLK. Uh, I think we've been out here since 2018, 17, somewhere in there. Awesome. Uh, but I don't know. I came in a little late, so Adrian, help me out. Who, who's, who's left here? Robert, correct? Robert Snyder. Uh, I'm 32 year resident of Oak Park uh, and I live near 36 and Y Street. So. Awesome. And then Sue. Hello everyone, I'm from the, the Curtis Park um, SCNA, the Neighborhood Association and um, uh, interested very much in uh, cycling and having good routes between uh, our two neighborhoods. So uh, here, especially for the second part of the meeting. Awesome. And how about Waverly next and then Katie? Hi everyone, I'm Waverly Hampton. I'm a business owner 
actually have a little space on Stockton Boulevard on the Elk Park side um, near 14th. I ran into Adrian last night in an event and he told me about the discussion. So I was interested to hear what was going on and also a uh, friend of Richard Fal Falcon. So happy to support and <laughs> and happy to hear what, uh, what you guys are up to. But thank you for having me. Katie, your turn. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, really glad to be here. Uh, my name is Katie Maple. I'm the vice president of the Neighborhood Association here and a uh, resident on 2nd Avenue. So this uh, this mural is, is uh, going to, I get to look at it every day. So I hope that it's something really great and looking forward to hear everybody's impact, uh, everybody's input on it. Thank you. All right. So I just pasted the agenda again for the folks who tuned in uh, just in the last few minutes. So we've done our intros. We're actually at 610. Oh, my God. We're right on time. Uh, so we're going to hear from uh, Richard first, who's going to tell us a bit a bit about La Pastorella and then seek our input to design some of the characters for this, this uh, really cool play that's coming to the neighborhood uh, next month, I believe. Uh, and then we're going to hear from uh, Caltrans as soon as they're, they're able to hop on about that Second Avenue mural project, which is super exciting as well. And then, of course, at the end, we always reserve time for updates, things going on, development projects, events. Um, as needed. So um, with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Richard. Right, thank you so much, Adrian. What a pleasure to be here. I got to tell you, I'm part of my own neighborhood association down here in Valley High, the Deerfield Mesa Grande Neighborhood Association. Um, you guys there in Oak Park are doing some amazing things. Great organization. Glad to see you guys are going strong. So I, I what I'm here doing today is representing for the Latino Center of Art and Culture. Latino Center of Art and Culture has been 40 plus years. They used to be known, some of you may have known them in the past as La Raza Galeria Posada here in town. And uh, we have changed that name over to the Latino Center of Art and Culture. For gosh, I wanna say about the last eight or nine years, they have started doing La Pastorella. So let's talk about La Pastorella for those of you that may not know, and some of you may. It's a longstanding tradition where, and, and many towns in Mexico, large and small, still tell this story every single Christmas. It's a very, that time of year is a very, very um, popular time, especially in many, many states and many, many cities in Mexico. And La Pastorella is a longstanding tradition in those towns where it's telling the story of good and evil. What it does is it basically takes the story that, uh, that was brought you know, over by the Spaniards in there, as we start talking about Christianity with the story of the Holy Family as they make their way to Bethlehem. And along the way, the shepherds, of course, they see that star and they say, hey, we've got to follow that star to try to come and find this family. Well, along the way, you've got this, this situation where the devil, Lucifer, Satan, whatever you want to call it, is trying to stop the shepherds from making uh, his way, their way to that holy family by tempting them, by finding the weaknesses in their characters, and then creating temptations along the way to stop them on their journey. Well, along the way, the shepherds are helped by San Miguel the Archangel, St. Michael the Archangel, who, who keeps them on their path until the final end where San Miguel and Lucifer have at it, good versus evil. And so traditionally, of course, good always triumphs over evil. Evil, And I got to tell you, I was really super excited as an actor to be in the first one that we did here in Sacramento, where we did it outdoors. And we started at 12th and K, and we walked along K Street doing little scenes until we got to the cathedral in Sacramento. And man, that was exciting. I got to tell you, I played Lucifer during that. And, and, and uh, I, I got to tell you, we happened to time it in such a way that that battle between San Miguel the Archangel and Lucifer happened right in front of the cathedral, right as mass was letting out. And so these people come pouring out of the church. Here's this battle going on between good and evil right in front of their eyes. And it was, it was really super exciting for me as a performer. 
We have since moved it over in various locations and now, and, and in, uh, I wanna say the last three or four years, we've done it at the Guild Theater there in Oak Park uh, out there. And it's been just an exciting time and we generally sell out along the way, you know, every time we do the performance. And this year's performance is, uh, is gonna be happening, I'm gonna pull up the calendar here, so I let you know, it is happening the weekend of the 17th, 18th and 19th, they're at the Guild. We are gonna be rehearsing at the Guild for the days prior as we move into that space. And we invite you as Oak Park residents to come free of charge on the Tuesday, the 14th, and one of our, as we prepare for our final rehearsals, come on in, take a look at the rehearsal process, have some fun. Oh, by the way, we, we put music to this too. So there are songs that are being sung along the way. But one of the things we do, as so many places do, we made it contemporary. So we brought in these characters, Armando, Carmela, Juan, and Gila, along the way, who meet along the way. And San Miguel gets them and says, hey, you got to go help that holy family. And so we usually inject modern themes. Some years it's been immigration. Some years it's been politics. Some years it's been many different things in there and we make it fun, we make it entertaining, we make it topical. And so I gotta tell you, I'm real super excited to come back as director for the show this year and, uh, and have a good time. So we wanna invite you to come, as I said, Tuesday, 7 p.m., come on out, free of charge. By the way, of course, we will be following CDC rules and regulations related to masks, related to vaccination status and such like that. But uh, even with that, we expect we will be filling the house at the Guild. So, and, and playing some music on the outside as people file in some traditional uh, musical numbers that many pastorellas incorporate along the way. So before I get to the fun part with all of you, which is going to be taking the characters, the main four shepherds that are along the way, and I'm going to introduce you to those shepherds and ask you for your input based on their characters on what things we could put into the play. So before I get there, just based on what you've heard so far, do you have any questions for me about, about the show, the dates, what's going to be happening or anything like that? anybody at all. And by the way, I've put my email address in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me personally. That is my personal email address. And I can answer any questions that you might have or tell you more about the Latino Center of Art and Culture. So any questions before we get to the fun? Nope. Nope. All right. Well, let's try to keep you on schedule. Uh, Adrian, I'm assuming I'm able to share my screen. Let me. Let's do that now. Hey, I, I guess I have a question. Are all the the perform the show start times seven p.m. for all the dates? Yes, they are. Okay, great. Yes, they are. All right, so let's get on here. Let me share my screen with all of you here. So what you are looking at here is a breakdown of the characters, and I'm going to read it very very quickly so you get a sense of who they are. So first we have Armando. Armando is a developer. Humble beginnings, farm worker family, graduated top of the class, determined like many of us to make that first million before age 40. Well, I'm 64 and I have not made my first million, but Armando is determined to do so. So what's going on in his life? He's about to score a major contract for market rate housing in Oak Park. Okay, so he's got some challenges here that he's got to overcome. You know, some so we want to we want to introduce you to that character there. Then there's Carmela. Carmela is a Sacramento born Chicana, moved out to Hollywood, became a starlet. She was really a high styler, 
but she lives in her car now in Sacramento. She's back in Sacramento because she lost everything when she refused to sleep with a Hollywood producer. She's too proud, though, to admit that she is in need. Okay, so that's our Carmela. Now we meet Juan. Juan is in his 30s. He's an Afghan war vet, recovering opiate addict, suffering from PTSD, and he masks his pain by taking his hand at stand-up comedy. And I want to share with you one of the jokes. I want to see if you'll get this or not. So you all heard of soy milk, right? Well, in the Spanish language, there is a word for soy. Like, yo soy Richard Falcon. Okay? So Juan comes up with this little bit where he says, what if soy milk was just milk introducing itself? Soy milk. Hey, oh boy, yeah. The audiences love that and they just, a few of them take some time to hear it and listen to it. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. So it gives you a sample of Juan's comedic talents. As I love it, I love it. <laughs> then we go to Gila. Gila is a 20 student, probably someone from Sac State, student activist, full of righteousness, full of fire, and a bit naive. So what I'm gonna be asking from you guys here, and we're recording this in case I need anything, I'm gonna welcome you to just take a look at these characters and tell me some points or character traits or things that might tempt them along the way in their trek. So feel free to jump in on this. Don't be shy. There is one thing about acting and performing, especially comedy, there is no right or wrong answer. So feel free taking, looking at Armando, that developer, Carmela, that former Hollywood starlet, now homeless, living in her car, Juan, that Afghan war vet, trying his hand at comedy to help his PTSD, and of course, Gila, the student activist along the way. What do you think, anybody? I can go first. Um, sure. th thinking of Armando. Um, so I, I guess when I picture him, so, so you're asking us for like things that would tempt them, correct? Things that tempt them or things that we can add into their character or even into the storyline. Right. And as they are be on this journey to to save the holy family, what kind of things might tempt them along the way to stop them? What kind of things might trigger them to move away from that temptation and find their way to, uh, to, to the righteous side of the, of the street? Okay, well, I, I, got, I got one for Armando then. I, okay. When I picture him, I guess I picture him in like a suit, you know, type, you know, professional, fancy clothing. Um, uh, maybe what could tempt him is like a $7 latte. You know, we, we have, we Ooh. talk a lot about gentrification here in Oak Park and I think a $7 latte is representative of some of the stuff we, we, we see in the neighborhood. Uh, so that might be, might be relevant. Yeah, I like that very much. Satan tempting him with a $7 latte. I love that, I love that. Anybody else got anything that they would like to add with Armando? Take your time on this. Give it some thought. Or Carmela, or Juan, or Gila. Hi, Richard. What would, quick what would Tim? Yes, Luis. A oh, quick question. Um, so obviously, there's like the major elephant in the room for the last years of COVID. Have yes. you thought about incorporating it in the play at all? We uh, we we have thought about it. We're in the process of doing the rewrites now. And I can tell you that there definitely will be some references related to COVID. Okay, cool. Um, and then just for Armando, something that would be interesting to see is maybe him coming across a family like the one that he came from, going through the struggles that come about gentrification or sure. being impacted by the, those decisions. I love it. I love it. 
Thank you for that. Others? Could we mail? I was going to add maybe for Armando. Um, I feel like someone here should be an anti-masker. <laughs> Mm. Um, and I just feel like Armando's character based on this outline makes the most sense, but also open to another placement, but. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That's great. Thank you so much, Andrea. All right. And if you, if you, if, if you got nothing for Armando right now, what about Carmela? You know, she's, she's like this proud, proud Chicana considers herself a starlet, an A-lister, and, you know, very, very fashion conscious, living in her car, too proud to admit that she's in need. What are some, and, you know, just to give you a sample of some of the temptations in the past has been a girlfriend going, oh, girlfriend, there is a sale for clothing going on over here. You got to stop your journey. That sale's only going on right now. Come on. Andale, vamonos. Let's go get those bags. Let's go get the dresses. So, you know, even, you know, fun things like that, uh, you know, we, we, we have seen kind of things. With people like with, with Gila, you know, being tempted by her grandmother, you know, oh, mija, I need you. No, no, no. Stop what you're doing. Come help. So, you know, what are some of the you know, things that you might think about that could be tempting for some of them? Selfie with Instagram. For Carmela? I like talking that. Talking about the fake it till you make it vibe. Uh, everything's fake on Instagram, I feel. <laughs> love it. I love it. Yeah, because I mean, what isn't that isn't that the biggest thing with social media is they talk about what's happening to our children and things like that about social media? I love it. I love it. What else you got for me? I feel like um, this is something that I noticed during the pandemic with some of my friends that were musicians or artists is that they just had a really hard time uh, finding work, you know, with the pandemic because there was no music events going on. And so I wonder if, um, you know, and a lot of my friends resorted to like selling some like art pieces or things that they like handcrafted. And I know that, um, you know, part of the, the journey is like them, you know, the, the characters walking along in, into different places. And so maybe something that could pop up is like Carmela trying to sell like her artwork or bracelets or, um, you know, things that she had to, uh, you know, figure out to sort of supplement um, you know, like that loss of income that a lot of artists face during the pandemic. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Or, or what if she's offered an acting job if she leaves the journey? You know, that, that might be a thought in there too. I love it. Who else? If not Carmela, we can move on to Juan. I, I have an idea. Yeah, um, for which, you know, for which obviously... Part? Carmela, I okay. think would be a good one, but it could maybe it could maybe apply to either Carmela or one. So one of the um, obviously one of the bigger challenges that's happening in Oak Park in particular is is gentrification and displacement. So maybe part of her story includes that you know maybe you can tie in the characters in this way. You know she originally was living in an apartment in Oak Park, but her landlord decided to sell the house and flip it to Armando because um, because the prices have been going up so much and, and her landlord can make money that way. So that was part of her story for ending her car. I love it, I love it. And like you said, that could even be something with Juan, you know, because <clears throat> we see so many of our veterans also being displaced as well. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna kind of, copy that into both fields, I think, you know, as a possibility. Looks like Waverly has his hand up as well. Waverly, what you got for me? Uh, so for Carmela, perhaps um, she could be tempted with an offer to be a spokesperson or an influencer for something that she doesn't Think she should support but you know she knows that it'll help her a lot i don't know maybe 
uh, again, you can tie her in with Armando. Maybe he needs a, a model or something or someone to to convince people that um, the what he's doing is good and that the deal, you know, for maybe building housing at market price is good or something like that for them. I don't know, but yes, it's cool. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. What about Gila? What 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 is a student? What is a student activist going to be tempted by? The media. The media. Oh. I think Gila and Armando have like a need to have a scene where they kind of go at it against their different views. I could imagine that she's going to be against the market rate apartments, right? And they're going to argue about that. Cool. Okay. Okay. What else? What else can you think of that might be? something that Gila might be tempted by. Maybe to give up activism so that she can focus on her classes or something. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one of her professors is oh. threatening to, you know, fail her for not showing up or something like that. that that's, that's very, very interesting. Yeah, I can definitely see that in there. Thank you for that. Well, listen, we are at 631 and I don't want to tie up all of your meeting, but these are fantastic suggestions. And so, so again, in the chat, I had put my email address, my personal email address in there. I want you to feel free to reach out to me with any thoughts that you might have about any of this. If you have any questions about the show, feel free to let me know. Also, I'm going to put this out there to y'all, okay? We need volunteers sometimes backstage, helping people change in and out of costume, you know, things like that, um, makeup, stuff like that. If any of you, even if you have no experience, that's okay. That is absolutely okay. So if any of you are also interested in being involved in the show in any way, shape or form, please feel free to reach out to me. We'll find a place for you. That's what we are all about. It's called the Latino Center of Art and Culture, but it is for everyone. Adrian, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thanks, Richard. This was, this was wonderful. I feel like we could keep going, honestly, but uh, there, there's definitely a lot of meat here <laughs> to work with. There is. Uh, just in terms of in terms of you know characters and their and what drives them and, and their storylines and their personal stories. Um, so so yeah, I mean I, I certainly will have more ideas that I'll send you away via email. Um, I guess I have a question. Uh, so there were there were a number of actors. So you know we we partnered with you guys in 2018 and 19, mm -hmm. and I, the actors in 2019 were wonderful. Are any or some of those actors coming back? Oh, what a great question. We have three that are returning uh, for us. Um, a, 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 a gentleman by the name of Pano Rodites of Argentinian and Greek descent, Angel Rodriguez. Uh, also, he, he's worked for the state for a while, but also a terrific actor. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from the third, but all the actors, are, all the actors and actresses are local. To that, so it's all local talent. Uh, many of them are Sac State graduates, and for for many, you know, as we find in theater in general, producing an environment, whether it's something like you might see with Celebration Arts, or something like you might see with my own theater company, Teatro Nagual, creating opportunity to do storytelling in a way that is relevant for the community is just so 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 important to us. And if you have young ones or, or even older folks who are interested in the arts or in theater, reach out to me. Lots of opportunities in there. There's, uh, you know, there, there's great, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of, for example, like the Brick House with what it does there on, you know, in Oak Park, you know, great organization there. Um, and many, many opportunities to inject arts. And I know you're gonna be talking about a mural with uh, with with Caltrans coming up, 
and that's wonderful. So grab hold of that art, keep holding your city leaders accountable and make sure that you're taking the task and saying, bring more art into Oak Park, man. Bring more park into, bring more art into Oak Park. You know, I think of Lisa Lacey and, and okay. you know, her theater company, you know, the late Lisa Lacey. She did some amazing things there too. So reach out, more to come. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for this. And we're really excited, really excited for this. <laughs> uh, does anyone have any uh, final questions for Richard or anything else they'd like to kind of elevate uh, with regard to La Pastorella? Not a question, but definitely just wanted to like make that extra pitch for everyone that's on the line to like really attend this event. I kid you not, it is it is hilarious. Like it, the jokes are for adults, for kids, for everyone. And I'm just really happy to see that the neighborhood association and the, the center are continuing to work together on this. It really warms my heart. And so hopefully some of you guys will attend. Um, I know I plan to, so I'm excited to see how it turns out this year. Thank you for that, Andrea. And yes, I can tell you, you know, from Maria Costa, my friend, my colleague with the Latino Center of Art and Culture, we are just so thrilled to be partnering with the Oak Park Neighborhood Association, you know, and to put good quality entertainment in, in, in the Guild, continuing the, you know, the legacy of the Guild and what it's been doing on there. So thank you for that. Awesome. And, and Richard, maybe you want to put your email one more time in the chat so that some of the new folks have access to it and that and they'll that'll be the best way to reach you. Right. Absolutely. And also um, the uh, the website for the uh, uh, for the center. Let me make sure I spell it right. And when you uh, go there to look at that particular website, we have a Facebook page, we've got a website, you'll see some advertising coming in there. And, uh, and, and you know, if, if, if people want to advertise in our program, you know, we are there to uh, help advertise some of your businesses there too. So reach out for any opportunity and any way that we can help you. And thank you for this opportunity and um, go Oak Park, man. Awesome. Well, feel free to stay on as we, we talk additional art via Caltrans. Um, I am, I'm so excited to hear about Caltrans because, you know, the, the, the city has their, when, when they're doing projects with Caltrans, man, there's bureaucracy. So I'm, I'm going to put myself on mute, going to drop off my photo, but anxious to hear what your, uh, what your as Caltrans representative has to say about the mural. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Well, Robert, I see you have joined us. This is Robert Nguyen with Caltrans. Uh, and and to, to Richard's point, I, I've been in a couple of meetings now with Robert and he doesn't make things seem very bureaucratic, which is awesome. So um, Robert would love if you could just tell us a little bit more about the Clean California effort that's relatively new with Caltrans and how it's sort of enabling a bunch more arts related projects like all over the state on uh, yeah, across our highways, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Well, you know, good evening, everyone. Uh, you know, thank you for having me here uh, again. You know, my name is Robert Nguyen and uh, it's, it's spelled spell N-G-Y-E-N. Uh, it, uh, it's not Nugen. <laughs> Uh, and so I'm, uh, I'm the project manager oversee this program along Highway 99. And uh, you know what, I'm, I'm very excited about this project. Um, you know, I'm in, uh, you know, with the Clean California Initiative. And you know, the main purpose of this program is uh, to advance equity for the underserved communities by <clears throat> implementing uh, transformative beautification projects on the state highway system uh, by improving the aesthetic of the public space on the public right of way. So it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's long. So ultimately, you know, the, uh, the outcome of this program is to install beautification enhancement um, projects. Um, you know, 
uh, transportation art enhancement and safety measure enhancement project across the state of California with the goal of beautifying and transforming the highway right away. So, um, you know, based on my uh, prior discussion with uh, the city of Sacramento, uh, Adrian and Allison, it seemed like there, there was a, uh, an effort to implement an art project at, at the second street. Uh, and, and in the past, and for whatever reason, it didn't materialize. So, um, you know, I think this is the time, um, you know, we have uh, set aside some funds to partner with the community and um, you know, the neighborhood associations uh, to develop a transportation art. You know, whatever, whatever you like, you know, this is, this is your project. It's not Caltrans project. We have funds available and uh, it's up to you to work together and come up with you know, something that uh, would enhance and enrich your community. So, you know, I mean, you know, to, to simplify the process and I think, you know, um, oh, some, there you go. <clears throat> just, just bringing this up so folks can look at it. There you it go. Too. So that's, uh, that's the structure that we are talking about. So yes, you know, I mean, uh, you know, in the past, you know, our process, I mean, it's just very cumbersome and to get something happen, it does take a long time. And, you know, the, 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 the only thing is that you have to know, you know, the, the procedures. I mean, the process is, you know, it's not that complicated if you know how to maneuver around it. So, you know, that is the reason why I'm here. I have delivered many, 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 many projects and uh, you know, I'm here to help you to make, to, to make it happen. So, you know, and, and, and as part of the, as part of the um, uh, you know, Clean California initiative, you know, we have, we have you know, simplified our process uh, to expedite delivery. So an example is, you, know, you are no longer required to have an encroachment permit. And that's a long process for anyone to want to do anything within our state right away. So we have eliminated the encroachment permits. Uh, this, the second thing is, you know, the review process, we have minimized or, or, or eliminate a lot of steps. So that's gonna make things move a lot faster. So, um, you know, ultimately, like I say, you know, I mean, this project is for, you know, for, for your community, uh, it's for your organization. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not for Caltrans. We are here to provide you support, provide you fundings and, you know, and, you know Whatever you need, I'm uh, I am I am here to 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 walk you through it, um, and and you know and do whatever I can to make it happen. You know that's 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 why I'm here. And beside this one project, you know the um, the um, the in initiative, um, we have a total of twelve locations that we identify. And you know before we go there, you know the entire program for, for District 3, you know, Sacramento region, Yuba, and you're just, you know, uh, just around Sacramento. You know, they allocated uh, about $28 million for our regions. And we were able to capture half of that. So we are, we are talking about, we are talking about, you know, $14 million set aside just for Route 99. And, and this is from, from Broadway, to all the way down to uh, Mac Road. So we're going to do a lot of improvements uh, along the highways and, and you know, Second Street and 21st Street uh, just to make everything look, look more beautiful. You know, it, that, that's the idea behind this project. You know, there's a lot of trash. There's a lot of, you know, sometimes, um, yeah, it's, you know, it, it, it's not pleasant driving on the freeway. And I think I show, I show Adrian uh, um, uh, a picture of, um, uh, of, uh, a project in um, in LA, uh, kind of near Orange County, where if you drive by there, it is beautiful. I mean, the the the, the you know the the artistic that they put behind you know the sound wall, the color. I mean, it, it's now it's it's beautiful, and that is I think that's the vision for Caltrans is to beautify and to make sure that you know that our highway system are clean and safe, and then that that's that's our ultimate goal. So, you know, that's, uh, that's about it. And, um, 
you know, if anyone have any questions, I'm, uh, I'm willing to answer. Thanks for that overview, Robert. Um, and just to give some other like background on this, so uh, a few years ago, yeah, there was an effort uh, to, and I, I'm actually curious if some folks on this call might have been involved in that, but there was an effort to do a mural at the Second Avenue underpass. Um, OPA was a part of it. I believe it was. Um, we're still kind of tracking down some information about it, but we were able to find a rendering. Um, that we're able that we're, we can share tonight uh, of what was supposed to be painted there. And it unfortunately just didn't happen. Um, I'm not personally sure why. I'm sure there's a long story behind it. Um, but there, there were a lot of neighbors who were involved in, in determining what that art would look like and where it would go. Uh, and so, um, and it's, and maybe I'll pass it over to Katie for some additional updates because, again, she lives pretty darn close to this uh, and is going to see it every day. Go ahead, Katie. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to add other than I just ran into Katie Vaughn's way right before this call and um, asked her about it. So she led the effort previously. Um, and so she said that she had just sent over to Allison Joe, um, like documents on documents. She had spreadsheets, community meetings, feedback, like renderings, all kinds of stuff. So there's just like a ton of information from when they did this uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was. And so um, I look forward to seeing that and then also incorporating in anything we get in addition to that moving forward. That's a great update. Okay, that's not just a little update. That's a big update. <laughs> so, we, we, you know, if we have that, we have access to all the, the work, the pre-work that was done, you know, the groundwork that was done with regard to the design. Uh, and maybe I will just share basically the only thing I have of, of note really on this, but this is, this is the rendering that, that, that we had obtained prior, uh, which is a mural showcasing like Oak Park leaders and people in the neighborhood and in the community who are doing awesome things. Um, so to my knowledge, this is what was <laughs> also being considered. Um, but of course, you know, um, some of the folks in this, for example, no longer live in the neighborhood. Um, I think there is value in, ha in having additional feedback with, you know, newer residents too. Um, but in any case, that's, you know, it's all, interesting and and I think where what where, what Robert and I uh, have talked about and what Alice and Joe with the um, council member Schneer's office have talked about is uh, working with the Sierra Curtis neighborhood association in hint um, on on sort of a joint effort to to um, to design and, and identify a an artist for this so um, a lot of cool partnership opportunities here uh, I don't know if others have thoughts either on sort of what th that background or maybe even the further background that that I may, may not have. And, and, you know, again, you know, Caltrans is not going to dictate what kind of art that you, or mural that you're going to come up with. That that's, that's for you. So all we ask is, you know, we have certain restrictions based on the color and other stuff because, you know, depending on the color that you apply onto the structure, uh, you know, we have to go out there and do inspection. So if you apply certain color or certain paint on there, we're going to have a hard time inspecting it. So there's certain certain condition. Uh, but I mean, overall, I mean, it's a there's a pretty um, pretty much a, a blank canvas for you to do as you wish. Well, um, just one thing that I've been thinking a lot about, and I'm sure other people have too, is is um, I would really like to see someone local. Like we have so many great local artists here in Sacramento and especially in, in this neighborhood, right? And I'm sure in Curtis Park neighborhood as well. So whatever effort we do undertake, just making sure that we're contributing back to the neighborhood in that way. And we're not gonna dictate who, you know, which artists you select either. Right. And, and Robert, I know at one point you guys had scoped out sort of a, like a, it looks like you've taken a picture of the underpass. This might have been the 21st uh, Avenue underpass, but you've taken a picture of it and you'd like done little grid, like a looks like like for, it was from a Tron. They like overlaid where basically all the surfaces that you could paint on. So it was like, oh, the side of this, the the long thing up here. I'm not describing it very well, but it look it really helped you think about where where art could go. 
Um, so anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there and then pass it to Leo and then Stu. Uh, is, it, is it possible that there's also electricity? Is there electricity under there as well? Where it can be a possibly glowing art, it doesn't have to be uh, necessarily paint. You know, we uh, we do have electricity uh, at that structure, and I think the other safety features that we were thinking about doing is add additional lightings because I think right now it's not that bright. It's so, very dark. Okay, so I'm um, so we we're thinking about adding additional lights on there. So depending on your proposal and what you want to do, but electricity uh, is available. Beautiful. So I'm not sure how this is, is this just open mic? Do you, un you unmute yourself and just speak freely? Is this how this works? Yeah, yeah. I Can we have Sue go first and then you? Does that work? Oh, for sure, for sure. All right, go ahead, Sue. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, uh, two things. Um, one, I would urge, I actually retired from DES and um, uh, good friends with the bridge maintenance inspectors over there. And I know they were not happy with the um, painting of the soffit, uh, 5th, 6th Avenue, where we used to have our farmer's market there because it's hard to catch the cracks. And so before you hire an artist, uh, then make sure that they don't have a similar concern with the abutments of that bridge there. Um, so I assume you're thinking to do just the walls and not the uh, not the soffit. Oh, Robert, you're, you're, yeah, Robert, you're muted. Uh, but yeah, why don't you tell us what this is? Okay. So I have already worked with our structure maintenance and we have identified the locations where you know, it's, 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 it's viable or feasible for you to paint. So we don't want any paint on the girders. So we identify you know, all these features, ring wall, you can paint on it, uh, sound wall, yes, uh, the apartment, yes. So you know, okay. we pretty much identify all the features on here where you can paint and where we prefer you not to paint. Okay, very good. Um, then I had a second question actually for Katie. And um, we had talked previously, I know they um, mentioned uh, plans to do art on the sound wall I had thought along by the pedestrian bridge at 7th or 8th Avenue there. And um, so is this, this is a different effort that you spoke of um, here? This is different, but Actually, yeah, you, you kind of, um, I was planning on making a pitch at the end to Robert here to see if that's possible. Um, so there's, uh, <laughs> so my, now might be a good time is there's the other, the other bridge, uh, the pedestrian bridge. Um, and we thought that that could be a really good opportunity as well. I don't know how that relates to Caltrans versus the city versus whomever might also control that, but. I'd say anything to the beautification of that pedestrian bridge would take away the fear factor. Um, Robert, I don't know if you've gone over that or not, but um, uh, it's like dead wood and um, it looks like there used to be lighting, but the wires were all pulled out. Uh, you know, maybe the, the highway lighting could be improved and then you wouldn't need it. But uh, 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 there's a lot of things I think that could be done until it's also ADA non-compliant there with the ramps. So I don't know what the long range plan is for that. And as well as the one, the next Ped Bridge South. You know, let me share something. And this is uh, something that Adrian saw this morning. Let me see here, share. Okay, hopefully everyone can see it. So this is the other project <clears throat> that I'm managing. So basically, this is the big part of the, um, uh, of the initiative. Uh, I mentioned earlier about having you know, uh, 12 locations. Well, mm -hmm. these are all the locations that we identify that we're gonna be doing some kind of work on it. Uh, and, and Adrian, you have a copy of this uh, in the invite and you can share it with, uh, with everyone if you like. Yeah, th this is what I was gonna put together into some sort of infographic one pager thing that you okay. have to find, you know. Perfect. And then, and then uh, now for the pedestrian overcrossing, we identify four locations. 
uh, A, B, C, and D. So A is right here um, between Florin Row and 47th. So that's one location. B is between 41st and 47th. C is between uh, Footridge and 21st. And D is between 5th and 12th. So I'm not sure exactly which POC that you uh, reference to, but these are the four that we are planning to uh, do some kind of work as part of this project. Right, yeah, I was speaking of D because that's the one that goes over to Curtis Park. Okay. okay. And we do want kids to be able to come back and forth and uh, you know, have friends on either side. Absolutely, and we are planning to you know, make this pedestrian overcrossing better. <laughs> it's going it's to look better, nicer, and, and safer, and cleaner. That's our plan. Very good. I think I've ridden my bike over, is it B or A? But one of them has a little rose garden at the bottom. I don't know if you know that. Um, and sure enough, I saw two mothers uh, escorting kids to grade school on the other side. So oh, let's uh let's go to Anne Marie Beasley Cisneros. I think I think I heard a male voice, but uh, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself, uh, and and uh, make your comment? Yeah, sorry. So I'm not, I just found out about this meeting first off uh, just about 30 minutes ago. So I apologize for uh, I'm walking out in the dark, so I don't have my camera. I didn't bring my phone, so it is my wife's uh, uh, I guess Zoom account that's being used here. Her name's coming up, but uh, this is Claudio Cisneros. We live. Uh, probably uh, about a block and a half, uh, not a block and a half, it's, it's a block. Um, we're on the kitty corner from Katie um, and we've been in the neighborhood since 2009 and some of the issues and been a part of the conversations that are, um, the efforts that have been uh, made towards uh, beautifying and trying to make this tunnel functional. And I think that's uh, where this is just a great opportunity to, um, you know, make it a walkable kind of uh, space. Some of the challenges that you have with it, though, are the texture on the walls. About halfway through the walls, you've got smooth and then textured, um, textured uh, like walls. And then the sidewalk itself is probably three, four feet wide max. Uh, but lighting is um, the the biggest issue. Uh, I mean, it gets dark in there even in the daytime. So any kind of art would need some kind of um, lighting. I think that this is, again, an opportunity to um, partner with, I don't know, the, some either, uh, is this is an opportunity to make this like a destination kind of space and then also like a gateway into Curtis Park and, uh, you know, going westbound and then a gateway coming into um, Oak Park coming eastbound and you can have easily on one side of the tunnel uh, welcome to Curtis Park and the other side coming in welcome to Oak Park and um, you know bridging this kind of these two different communities and having input from both of those communities and uh, I'm hoping that, that it's uh, you know lighting some uh, something aesthetic something functional and timeless is kind of just the big picture things that I'm that I'm thinking of. Yeah, thank you for that. And there's a lot of comments in chat. Um, I don't know if folks want to vocalize any of that stuff, but a lot of good ideas. Can I ask one more question, Asia? Please. Uh, yeah, well, when are we going to start? Go for Oh, when are we going to start the project? <laughs> yeah, let's roll, man. What, 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 time, what kind of timelines are we looking at? What dates? Well, uh, let's see here. Depending on which project you're talking about, but this particular one, uh, we do have some time. The only thing we ask is to get it painted and complete by, oh God, was it? Uh, I think it was uh, June 2023 is our, our ultimate deadline. But for you, March 2023, we have to so, try to finish three three months before the real deadlines. 
is this still a very high level or do we have point of context that we're speaking with and artists that we're starting to reach out to? That's how, Adrian. how high level is this? That's Adrian still... and uh, Allison. Gotcha. Yeah, we don't, we do, we have not identified an artist. We've just, this is a new conversation. What, what, okay. one thing I think we, we do want to do though is recognize that there has been work done on at this site previously. You know, people have already visioned some, you know, like the mural I shared, for example. There's been a lot of engagement already. Uh, to like Katie's point about uh, former OPNA president Katie Valenzuela doing a bunch of work on this, right? Um, and so, so we, we want to be respectful of, of all the work that's already been done, but also be open to new uh, ways of doing things, I guess. And one, one thing, I don't want to like, uh, you know, cut you off, Leo, but I'm also maybe curious to hear from Robert, like what the funding amount is total for, for the Second Avenue project, including the, because I know you also offered up the ability to do the preserver, the mural coding as well, right? Right. So, you know, right now what we're looking at is uh, roughly about $40,000 that we're going to set aside for this project. So, but, you know, the funding is, you know, it's, it's somewhat flexible. I mean, it's all dependent on how much my other project and my other 12 location going to suck it up. But, uh, you know, right now we just set aside 40000 You guarantee 40000 And if, I, if, we, if we have saving in the other locations, you know, definitely we can um, uh, expand on that. And hopefully you can, you know, you can work with 40,000. Mm. Thoughts on that, Leo? Uh, that's a pretty tight budget for all of those spaces. That's my yeah, initial like thought. We, we, but, don't, we uh, don't want to paint the entire bridge. Oh, I, I, I dig it. I mean, if that's what we need to work with, then that's what we work with. But I, I, my initial thought is it's a tight budget. But uh, if that's what we need to do, uh, lighting is a concern for me. And that in itself, I can see costing upwards of 10 just to. But we work it out. That's what Oak Park does. And, and you know what? For, for lighting, if it's, if it's safety, it's going to be on top of the 40,000. So the 40,000 is only for the art work. Would we so, have to make a proposal to show that that is a safety issue? I, we, yeah, I mean, we have already identified it as a safety and we are planning to put oh, uh, lightings underneath the structure. And that, oh, that's, that's come out of, you know, I mean, outside of the 40,000. Awesome. The 40 is just for this second Avenue art. mural. It's not for the other 12 projects. It's just this one. Right. And, okay. and same thing on the 21st project, we work with Franklin uh, Group um, neighborhood and, um, you know, we also told them, you know, 40,000. But again, you know, it's all depend on how much money we're going to save on, you know, on my other 12 locations. Um, you know, I think, I think we can work something out and uh, definitely, I think, you know, our, our district director, everybody, you know, from the bottom up, I mean, we, we, we know how important you know, this, this project is for the community and we will make it happen. So I want to, I see that Barbara has entered in the, that, the B fan, that's you, Barbara, right? Uh, I, I just love if, if you were able to maybe expand upon your comment just about like the brick house's ability to, um, you know, to kind of get involved if, if there were, you know, if there was a desire and it sounds like there's a desire to use more partners. Um, well, I'm, I'm coming in late on this project, so I'm trying to catch up. I guess I'll have to meet with different people to find out exactly what is going on. I know several years ago, there was supposed to have been, uh, this project was supposed to have been taking place, I think in that exact same area. Um, you were talking about the dollar amount, 40,000, which I feel is very low. Artists need to be paid. Uh, and that's a very massive, uh, very massive space. And then the other part of that I was sharing that, yes, I have um, a lot of artists that I have connections with um, that are muralists uh, here in Sacramento. But at the exact same time, the theme or idea, I don't know who's lead on this. I'm hearing different things. Are you lead, Leo? Who's lead on this? No, no, uh, not Leo. 
Okay, all right. <laughs> Trying to find out who's lead on this. And so, it, yeah, ex exactly what the wants or, or needs are exactly, you know, for this. So uh, I guess once collectively deciding um definitely needs to be an art call and some type of letter constructed on exactly what this project is supposed to be and what it is that you're anticipating and what the needs are from the artists themselves um and then we would need to know also too what the artists are requiring in terms of payment you know are the art supplies going to be taken care of out of this forty thousand? it is that you're talking about art supplies are very 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 expensive or is that coming from the city, Mr. Nugent? Uh, you got 40,000, however you want to manage it. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe, um, maybe a little bit of background just quickly. Like, so this is an initial conversation. Nothing's been decided, nothing's been planned. This is literally is like the really first, good first. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear yeah, me better? That's like a really good sound. Okay. okay. <laughs> Oh, the salad. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's just initial. This is our first step, and just um, we were approached by Robert saying, "Hey, we're that Caltrans was interested in uh, doing some beautification projects. He engaged the neighborhood associations, and this is just the very, very, very beginning. So we're really interested in all your feedback and what anybody has to say. And it sounds like there's going to be a lot of next steps after this call. And I think it would be. Um important for the next you know i can do some uh, invites so that we can have artists uh in here you know on that so you can get their perspective exactly you know what their requirements are what their needs are uh, as i'm saying that area over there is massive that is huge and i can't see us just doing one side of that area at all um for the type of uh, beauty edification it is that I see, I see everything uh, being painted over there. And we need it on this, on our side anyway. I think that, you know, we're really lacking um, some beauty in that area. And this is right over there where the Salvation Army is, correct? The, yeah, behind absolutely. Salvation. Yep. Okay. the Salvation Army, yeah. Uh, so that's a massive area that will take a lot of paint, a lot of spray paint. Yes. Could I ask about the city right away versus the state right away? Um, because I'm thinking if to go beyond the bridge, say you want a sign, welcome to Oak Park, welcome to Curtis Park. It seems to me we would have to be working with the cities, city. Exactly. Is that Robert? How were you? Yes, we are, we are only responsible for everything within the state right away so anything outside of that you would have to work with the city but i think i know that they are very supportive of this project and uh, and, and then if we're talking about putting a sign up for welcome um, uh, curtis park i would think that we would have curtis parks association investing in this as well so that this is not a one-sided venture and especially seeing how dollars are very limited so far right i'm here on their behalf yeah, we have the Sarah, Sarah Curtis folks here. Okay. Any more questions for me? <laughs> Just appreciate appreciate all that you're able to bring to the conversation, Barbara, because you are connected to so many artists. And um, just another thing, I think it would be fun to do a contest. <laughs> yeah. Get some excitement. Yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. A lot of different cities that I know um, um, when you're doing projects such as this, they do uh, start off with a contest. So just saying, good seeing everybody. Looks like Rosalie has her hand up. Yeah, I like, um, I just wanted to comment two things. The, I like the idea of, of the um, contest. I would love to see uh, youth have a contest and then artists, you know, render from the what the youth come up with. And then the idea I, I had posted in the chat that the um, what's it called the um, neon that's under the the underpass under the freeway off of Richards Boulevard. Mm -hmm if that's my memory, yep. it's like neon. And so 
adding something like that, you know, like even if it was like a kid's art rendering and then some of it was outlined in neon a pie or something. But so those are my, that's my input. <laughs> Is that this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I've always loved that. And I just think it would be a really amazing way to, to lighten up the, yeah, because it, and if there's some way to, I don't, this isn't quite the art thing, but I feel like the sidewalks need to be somehow widened or, I don't know, it seems like there be, might be something you could do to make it more walkable because it's so, they're so narrow through oh. there. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. It, it looks like Waverly's got his hand up next. Yeah, I was just going to comment that the contest idea is a great idea too. Um, I think my business would be happy to sponsor some prizes. So if you guys were thinking of, you know, doing different levels of prizes, we can um, work on uh, figuring out what those would be and then definitely gather some. Um, I love the idea of including youth. I think, yeah, um, engaging, engaging youth in community is important. So uh, definitely, uh, however I can help or, you know, my uh, my business, happy to do it. Awesome offer, thank you. What other thoughts do folks have? So I, I've I've been taking some notes. Um, you know, per Barbara, making sure to bring artists to the next meeting to help us to help inform the conversation. Um, I have the, the contest idea, um, the, the, the potential utilization of electricity. So it's not just paint that we that might be used, but other kind of materials. Um, uh, Claudia, it's Claudio, right? You, you ask if SMAC can be a partner. Um, yeah, well, why don't you go ahead? You're raising your hand. Well, I had posted a couple of things. Um, one, a question, and I apologize, I think it's Mr. Nguyen from Caltrans, um, is would lighting that is in itself a, a work of art be under the art budget or the lighting budget? Could it be mixed? Um, and then, so that's one question. And then I, I'm kind of just going to throw these out there because my phone's about to die here and I might get cut off. But um, the other uh, on SMAC, I know they've partnered in a couple of, of things and, and definitely can probably be a, a, a partner if um, there isn't like, if Caltrain is open to working with, with other agencies on, on doing it, I think that's going to be key for, um, for making this kind of rock because $40,000 is not going to, um, cover what many have already said is, is a pretty big space there. Um, and then the, the last thing before my battery dies here, uh, I think that, um, the PR, the contest issue and making this, um, you know, uh, uh, getting some publicity around it is definitely in the right direction in terms of making this like a destination kind of space. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Robert, do you, are you able to answer any of that? Yeah, um, and you know what? I mean, uh, when it comes to lightings, you know, we have lightings for safety and we have lightings for, if, if, you, if you consider lighting as, as, uh, as art, I think that, you know, we can probably, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's kind of, you know, it, it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to determine right now, but I think we can work it out because, you know, light as art, it is art. And maybe we can use some of the, 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 the lighting for safety for that. I don't know. I mean, I haven't really put a lot of thoughts behind it, but, you know, excellent, excellent idea. I mean, uh, definitely I'll, I'll, I'll pursue it, I'll, I'll look into it. And, um, you know, one of the thing is, you know, based on you know, what, what I hear here is, you know, you need more money. I think we all need more money. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna find way to get more money for you. Uh, but, you know, shoot for 40,000 and anything beyond that, I, I, I'll see what I can do. Go ahead, Leo. Uh... I was thinking about using our resources that we have at hand. Uh, money keeps coming up as an issue. And so what if we did a match? Hey, community, 
this is what's going on. We already have $40,000 in hand. We're raising funds to match that $40,000 and maybe any dollar amount that anyone from the community is able to contribute, they're able to contribute. And now we have a bigger, better mural light show than anyone because we've had twice the budget. And that shows our community rocking it again. And we can use Oak Park to do it. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good way to frame it too. I like that. I think I think we can do a whole thing with that. And I would get behind that and organize that. All right. Well, I'm definitely writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a good way to yeah maximize maximize resources for sure. Um, there are other other thoughts. I and I think um, I always say other thoughts when I start talking. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what what one thing I think that would be a kind of a no brainer next step is to look at what Katie mentioned. Katie Valenzuela had sent in terms of like the old designs. Uh, and the and the input that had previously been gathered, maybe we can see if that really resonates. Um, I know again the the design that I shared that I understand was the final design. Again, it was a bunch. It was a number of community leaders. Some of them do not live here anymore. Um, so I would imagine maybe we don't want to do that exact same design, but could be wrong. Um, but we will definitely share out all of the the stuff that has come from uh, from. The council member Valenzuela. Um, go ahead, Rosalie. Oh, I just another thought was with the uh, raising funds. Um, I don't know how that this might look, but the idea of the tiles that people can you could you could do like a whole project where kids yeah purchase a tile purchase a tile because. I would love to do that. We've never done that at anywhere. You know, I see it at Curtis Park and at McKinley Park, but we could do it on there and, you know, cost it, have a big fee and that. then have have people that are willing to like donate so that another a kid that doesn't have the money could do one. Um, so that could just be a cool way to raise money and put it on one section of it. See head nods. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> uh, how about you, Rosie? Thanks, Adrian. I was just going to say, I know, uh, Robert, you had mentioned some sort of limitations around colors potentially. And I think if maybe if there are any parameters that you can share before, you know, um, I think early on that would be helpful so that if there's a contest or anything like that, we know what to, what could the parameters be and, and what would work and what wouldn't work. So just to make sure that we don't get too ahead on that aspect, but that would be helpful, I think. Adrian, <clears throat> did I send you all the guidelines? I thought I sent it over to you already. You may but, have. Uh, you know what, let me, let, me, uh, let me look into that, but we do have guidelines on what we can do and what we, can do, what we cannot do. Uh, one example is, you know, uh, dark color paint. That's something that we don't, we don't allow because of you know, inspections and cracks and all that stuff. So, uh, but we do have a guidelines and um, yeah, I'll definitely send it over. I'll send it over, over to you, Adrian. Yeah, I'll please do it tomorrow. Do. You may have sent it. I just, yeah, I haven't had a chance to read everything. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I sent it to Allison. Maybe both of you, I don't know. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll Hillary, send it. We, we do have Hillary on the line with Council Member Schneer's office in case she has anything special to share, but just, just throwing that out there. Um, Okay, it looks like Michael Blair has his hand up. Hey, just wanted to mention, it sounds like a lot of really great ideas. It's what I love when community comes together because all of our diversity shows and we come up with all kinds of ways to solve a problem. So I love that, that about Oak Park. Uh, what I think we should do though is get a list of names. Anybody who's interested in participating and helping with this, uh, put your name in the chat. Because what happens oftentimes is we just get uh, great ideas and then it all falls on the board and then we don't have the capacity to pull it off. And then, you know, a lot of great ideas just kind of go undone. So I want to make sure that 
everybody who has energy for this is able to uh, participate and we make it something that's really community driven. So I'd say put your name in the chat and then we have uh, name and email and then we'll be able to pull that all together, maybe form a committee, whatever we wanna do and, and we'll have a lot of interested folks to you know, kind of carry the weight and make sure it gets pulled off the right way. Thank you. Yes, Jen. Yeah, and, and the timeline, I know uh, Leo asked about the timeline and Robert was like, what was it? Like June, March, 2023, which sounds like a really long time from now, but you know, it does give us some flexibility. It's, it's not like, you know, March, 2022, <laughs> it's March, 2023, so that's good, but it still also will creep up on us. <laughs> so. Hmm. Yeah, so keep putting your info in the chat. I'm seeing a lot of it. We will save that for sure and, and send materials out to everyone who does enter their stuff in the chat. And if I know you and have your email, I'm, I'm going to include you, whether you like it or not. So <laughs> get ready for that. Uh, Leo, did you have a comment? No. No. I'm good. All right. Okay, well, any final questions for Robert while we have him? Sounds like we have, we have some work to do. You know, I think the- uh, I do. The, Sorry, I couldn't find my, raise your hand. Can I, um, so um, the funding is only for right at the freeway, right? It's nothing close to the freeways. And they work within a state right away. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Only the state right away, yeah. Okay. So Robert, would, would you guys be able to, Rosalie's point, you know how you showed us the graphic that had the Tron, remember the, the things that said right. where you could and couldn't do art? Could you guys create, would you guys have the capacity to create that for Second Avenue? You know, uh, yeah, you know what? Let me work with uh, my structure uh, people and see if we can come up with something like that. But in, in general, you know, a wing wall is a wing wall and, uh, and a sound wall is a sound wall. So you can basically take what I showed earlier and apply it to this structure. And you know, both, both of these structures, the 21st and the second, they're, they're pretty much similar, very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, and Sarah, you, you pasted something in the chat. Would you like to unmute yourself and, and ask that question? Because I think it's a good one about uh, kind of to Leo's point about adding additional resources. Hi, Robert. My name's Sarah. I live right by this. And um, I also work for Caltrans. So I had a specific question about um, the funding under Clean California. Is there a cap for this or is there a way to pair this contractually under perhaps some, an interagency or co-op? contract to open up additional funding? Like, is there, you know, are there potential other pools that we could tie in? I know how hot Clean California is right now within Caltrans. I, um, if you can identify other funding sources, I can look into it. But right now uh, for this particular project is pretty much uh, Clean California funds only. So I'm, to make sure I'm understanding. So yeah, there is a that cap, that 40K cap on this under Clean California currently? For this location. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. And, and like like I mentioned before, you know, I mean if, if there's if there's you know availability in funding, if there's saving in other location, we will definitely consider adding more onto second and twenty first. Thank you very much. All right, last call for questions. Okay, well, Robert, you wanna, you have any, actually, Sue, I saw you unmute yourself. You, you wanna make a quick uh, comment? Just a, a quick question for Robert. So uh, the complete streets uh, program that was around in the past and just thinking about, yeah, using other pots of money, 
is that still around? Because I think this is kind of what we're trying to do is improve the ambiance. You know what, Complete Street is still around. And if we were able to tap into that fund to contribute into what we're doing here, uh, definitely. Um, you know, I can, uh, let me check with a program manager, the Complete Street program man manager and see if they, if, if they have extra money. Basically, you know, money is already allocated to every single project. So if there's extra money somewhere, maybe they can contribute mm -hmm. to this project, assuming that it's, you know, it's eligible and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. And Sue, I remember working with you. Uh -oh. I, was in, I, I was in structure design for, uh, for many years. I left structure design 20 years ago. And uh, you used to work in estimating or something, was, didn't you? In structure? Not, I, I taught at the Bridge Design Academy. Yeah, you, prob you probably taught me. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to see you're in project management. <laughs> All right. yeah, well, yeah, you're doing a great job, Robert. We, we really do like working for you as working with you, with you. Um, you know, you just, you're able to remove the bureaucracy from a lot of this. I just, I just, I always hear like, oh, work with Caltrans. Oh my God. But it doesn't seem like that. So that's great. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not that bad if you know the procedure and the process. And I wouldn't say there's loopholes. But uh, you know, I'm, uh, there, there's a way to get around certain things and you know, we can get certain exception when necessary. Well, Robert, we know that you're gonna lead the way and get us those exceptions so that we can get some more money. And we're really excited about that because uh, I think this is gonna be a great project and we appreciate you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. Be cool. All right, so we just have a little bit of time left. Um, th this is normally where we do community announcements, sharing events, sharing projects, goings on in the neighborhood. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go real quick first and just uh, kind of promote our Oak Park Cares program. This is what OPNA does. It's a program that we're actually uh, utilizing in order to provide basically funding for basic needs to Oak Park residents. Um, so we've actually paid out, I believe, and Katie, Michael, Luis, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we paid out $7,500 in the last 90 days, roughly, in, in, the form, in these payments to um, Oak Park residents, um, sending out those direct checks to help folks pay their rent, medical bills, car payments, whatever it might be. Uh, and also wanna just recognize uh, Perfect Union, for seeding most of the funds, $5,000 um, to, to be paid out by the community, you know, 100% goes out the door, uh, which is wonderful. And then we've also been able to fundraise about another $5,000 from individual donors, which is awesome too. So I posted the link in the chat. If you're interested in giving a few bucks, you can do it via PayPal or you can write us a chat. But all that money goes out the door to, to Oak Park residents. So um, great program. I don't know if any of my colleagues want to add to it. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely a, uh, you know, uh, from the ground project just, you know, came out of the conversation and we just started to execute. So uh, I think it's definitely what was needed at the time and has a potential to continue to do so much more uh, as we go on and, and continue to build it. And we're working on bringing new partners to be able to um, help us fund this thing. Uh, as OPNA, we've never been great at going out and asking for money uh, because we're part of the community. And uh, we at the meetings when we'd be live, we'd pass a little bucket around and collect, you know, 25 bucks here and there. But now we're on a different level. We're trying to be able to pull in more so we can do much more for the residents because the need is just so great. So glad for everybody on the board stepping up to make this happen. And uh, it's, it's turned out to be something really successful and beneficial for the community. So thanks. Um, no one else going. I just want to say a little reminder, just because I, I found this in my conversations with people in my neighborhood, that SHRA is still accepting applications for rental assistance. So if you or anyone you know is struggling to pay rent or utilities, 
So your SMUD bill, energy, anything like that, you can apply through this program to get funds and there's still millions of dollars left. So I'm gonna put the link in the chat, um, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Thank you. Uh, and then I, I love to promote this project because it's my day job to, to work on it, but um, uh, I'm privileged to work on a project where we're doing uh, community air monitoring in Oak Park and in North Sacramento. Uh, I put a link in the chat to uh, the map that you can go to. We have 10 solar powered air monitors all around Oak Park. And you can go to that map and you can look at live AQI and air and pollution readings to see how some of these disparities block by block in Oak Park manifest themselves. So you can, it's really interesting, um, but it's it's part of an environmental justice effort that we've been working on for, for over a year now. Um, uh, you know, near and dear to my heart, <laughs> but uh, definitely make use of the, that air monitoring data um, you know, when uh, as, as frequently as you can, honestly. Um, are there other announcements? Anything at all? Okay. I actually well, have a, a quick question for the group. I'm sorry to Beth. Um, I don't know. I know we're getting closer to Thanksgiving. So is, if anyone's aware of like, turkey giveaways or anything like that that's coming up. I think it'd be cool to kind of maybe create a resource list on our group page or something like that or a newsletter. I'm sure there's a lot of things going on. I just sometimes I only find out about them by just going on Facebook. So if anybody knows of anything, let me know. Um, the Sacramento Food Bank last year hosted a major Thanksgiving drive through I think y'all know, um, down in the high school down south. So they might be planning on doing that again. It might be nice to get ahead of promotional or helping them get out the work or anything. I'm happy to reach out to them to ask. That's awesome. All right, anything else going once? Last part to that, um, Broadway, Broadway Coffee will be having a uh, Thanksgiving dinner for uh, anyone who doesn't really have anywhere to go. Um, we were kind of keeping it to like employees and things like that, that, that level that's not quite on the street, but I also don't have family or extra funds to, to go create a meal either. So uh, the level above targeting, but uh, we will have a, a meal. That's amazing, Leo. Oh my God, <laughs> that's so wonderful. God, I, I, I you're doing so much cool stuff. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Hey, we'll share um, email over or post to Facebook. You know, some more info, or you know, if you want to keep it small, send it via email. But we'd love for more info on that. That's wonderful, and it's on on Thanksgiving Day, correct? It'll be Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, you do have to make lattes in order to eat. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for joining us. We had a very productive meeting. Um, as, as always, these are held on the first Thursday of the month. We're still doing them virtually. I think maybe we'll think about doing it in person because I miss a lot of you guys, but... For now, we're doing them virtually and um, keep an eye out for the next invite. And we look forward to just working on all this other great stuff with you guys. Thanks, Susan. All right. Bye, all. Good evening. <laughs>